Hello, my name is Fatih. Welcome to my presentation of Unclonable Encryption Revisited, which is joint work with Prabhanjan Anand. Unclonable cryptography is a hot field in quantum cryptography, which relies on the no cloning theorem. No cloning theorem states that there is no universal cloner of quantum states. In particular, it states that any cloner can clone a set of states which are mutually orthogonal, assuming this cloner is exact. Clearly, this concept has no classical counterpart. Any classical bit of information can be indefinitely copied. There are several unclonable primitives that are based on the no cloning theorem. Quantum money is a primitive in which quantum states are used as banknotes and they cannot be cloned to make more money without the bank's permission. Introduced by Scott Aronson, copy protection is a primitive that protects against software piracy. Signature tokens allow you to sign messages only once given a quantum state, which means it has to be unclonable. Likewise, in single decryptor encryption, there is a decryption key which cannot be used more than once for the decryption functionality. And finally, unclonable encryption, which is the topic of today's talk, introduced by Broadband and Lord, is a primitive where ciphertexts are, cannot be cloned in a way that preserves the functionality of being decrypted into the original message. In this context, we're considering the setting where we're encrypting classical messages using quantum algorithms and thereby having quantum ciphertexts. So how do we define unclonability in this setting? It is defined by a security experiment, which we will call the cloning experiment. And the maximum attainable success probability in this experiment by a polynomial time triplet adversary, which I will refer to as Alice, Bob, and Charlie, will give us the security parameter uh, as it relates to unclonability. The cloning experiment consists of two phases. In the first phase, the challenger creates encryption of a random message and sends it to Alice. And then Alice applies a quantum channel to split the ciphertext between two physically distant registers, which belong to Bob and Charlie. The second phase is the challenge phase in which Bob and Charlie are not allowed to communicate. After learning the key from the challenger, Bob and Charlie need to both guess the message correctly. This captures the intuition that they both preserve the decryption functionality simultaneously. Note that you can always trivially send the ciphertext to one of the parties, say Bob, and then have Charlie guess the message uniformly at random, which would give us a success probability of 1 over 2 to the n. So that will be the benchmark to compare success probabilities with. In their introductory work, Broadbent and Lord presented two constructions of unclonable encryption. The first one, which they call conjugate encryption, is based on the conjugate coding by Weisner, which are the BBA D4 states used in Weisner's quantum money construction as well as quantum key distribution. 
the security for this scheme is information theoretic and it, it matches the value 0.85 to the n which comes from a monogamy of entanglement bound. They also show a modification using PRFs which achieves a better security but only in the quantum random oracle model. In this work we explore different ways to improve on this introductory work on unclonable encryption. Here are some of the open directions left by the authors to explore. Can we make the key reusable without resorting to the random oracle model? Can we make the encryption in the public key setting? Can we achieve security close to 0.5 to the n which matches the trivial attack and can we use this unclonable encryption primitive to construct other unclonable crypto or show implications in the other direction we answer three out of the four questions positively in this paper and we make some observations and show negative results about the existing constructions uh, regarding the security. Our first contribution is about the reusability of the key. The information theoretic construction of Broadband and Lord did not allow the key to be reused due to a one-time path uh, in the encryption. So assuming post-quantum one-way functions, we present a construction which is secure under multi-message attacks. Likewise, we also present a scheme in the public key setting, which is semantically secure. Again, this construction is based on minimal possible assumptions. There are different reasons we care about reusability of the key. One is efficiency. We don't want to have to create a new key for each bit of communication. Secondly, all the benefits of public key crypto in the classical world still apply to the case of unclonable encryption with the additional requirement that we might be in a setting where unclonability is desired. This motivates our second construction, which is in the public key setting. Thirdly, in case we use unclonable encryption to construct other primitives, we might need reusability of the key in security proofs. It is important to note that in our work, we do not consider the issue of reusability as it pertains to unclonable security. We only take it into account in semantic security. This is not a big problem in the public key setting since the adversary can generate ciphertexts himself. However, in the private key setting, uh, a more delicate argument might be needed. Here's a table that summarizes the increment of our constructions, which is that they satisfy semantic security without having to use random oracle model. Next we explore whether the 0.85 to the n unclonable security is tight for the conjugate encryption. It turns out it is tight in the sense that we, it, it cannot be arbitrarily close to 0.5 to the n due to a universal cloning attack which we present. One way to potentially get closer to 0.5 to the n is to find the harder monogamy of entanglement game and base the construction on that game. We show that the use of Weisner bases can be generalized to include a larger class of bases and the corresponding monogamy of entanglement games. And such bases and such monogamy games have been analyzed. One example is coset states. Our final contribution is to show an implication from unclonable encryption to copy protection. 
A copy protection scheme is a tuple of algorithms, copy protect and evaluate. Given a function from a family, copy protect outputs a copy protected quantum state. And using that quantum state, a client can evaluate inputs of f. Correctness requires that if this is done honestly, the output should be equal to f of x. And security requires that it's impossible to make two copies of the copy protected program with the same functionality, even if a malicious evaluation algorithm is used. So recall the unclonable security game. And now we will present a stronger version, which was introduced by Broadband and Lord also. In this version, the adversary gets to choose a pair of messages and plays a semantic security game where to win, Bob and Charlie must simultaneously distinguish these messages after the key has been revealed in the second phase. Note that in this experiment, the trivial strategy succeeds by having Charlie guess randomly and the probability of success is one half. Therefore, we call an unclonable encryption scheme unclonable indistinguishable secure if the optimal value of this experiment is negligibly close to one half. Since Aronson introduced copy protection, copy protection of point functions has remained an open problem. Aronson himself had proposed this scheme, but today, to date, there is no formal security proof. In a recent work, um, the question was answered positively where the security was shown in the quantum random oracle model. The question in the plane model still remains open. We show that unclonable indistinguishable security, which was the stronger version of unclonable security, can be used to construct copy protection for point functions in the plane model. This result makes the feasibility of this stronger primitive an interesting question. One limitation of our construction is that it satisfies a slightly weaker notion of correctness called computational correctness, which states that a polynomial time adversaries will not run into inputs that evaluate incorrectly. All in all, this presents a new direction to explore in trying to show copy protection of point functions. Let's move on to details. So uh, we'll first talk about the key reusability. In our private key construction, we make use of hybrid encryption. We take as granted a one-time unclonable encryption scheme and the post-quantum pri private key encryption scheme. The first scheme uh, can be instantiated by conjugate encryption of broadband and Lord, for example. And the idea is that we gain best of both worlds, where unclonability comes from the first scheme and reusability from the second one. The key to our scheme will be the private key encryption key. And to encrypt a message, we will first generate an unclonable encryption key and encrypt the message using that key as well as encrypt that key using the private key encryption key. The ciphertext will be the concatenation of these two ciphertexts, one of which is quantum. It is well known that hybrid encryption like this inherits semantic security from the outer layer encryption PKE. As for unclonable security, a direct reduction unfortunately does not work due to the nature of the cloning experiment. Recall that in the second phase of the cloning experiment, the key is revealed, 
which makes it a challenge to invoke the semantic security of PKE. To overcome this issue, we've come up with a property which makes the encryption non-binding. Fakey property states that in the eyes of the adversary, a ciphertext key pair is indistinguishable from another pair where the encrypted message is zero and the key is a fake key generated using the ciphertext and the original message. Let's go back to the cloning experiment. Using the fake key properly, we will slightly modify this experiment to overcome our previous issue. In the next hybrid, we replace m by zero in the first phase and in the second phase, instead of revealing the original key k, we reveal the fake key. The fake key property implies that the two hybrids do not differ in the adversary's success probability except for a neg negligible amount. So that all, rem all that remains to show is this modified experiment. Unlike before, the fake key is not alien to the reduction and it can be generated when simulating the challenger. Therefore, this uh, finishes the security proof. And in our paper, we instantiate this fake key property using pseudorandom functions. We follow the same philosophy in the public key setting. However, instead of the fake key property, we rely on functional encryption. And this can be instantiated using post quantum public key encryption, which is trivially necessary for public key unclonable encryption. We also make use of private key encryption with pseudorandom ciphertexts. And please refer to the manuscript for the details. Let's move on to our next result. Uh, before we start, let's, let's establish some notation. The Weisner basis uh, will be denoted by x raised to theta. And this means for an n bit string theta and x, Hadamard gate will be applied to certain qubits of x depending on theta. Conjugate encryption on clonable security is based on the BB84 monogamy game, which we will define now. It's, it's a security game between the challenger and an adversary, which will denote by Bob and Charlie. The adversary starts by preparing a tripartite state and sending one of the registers to the challenger. And we will call n the size of the register of the challenger. And the rest of the state will be split between Bob and Charlie. And in the second phase, they're not allowed to communicate. And the challenger will measure uh, its register on a random Weisner basis, indexed by theta. And the goal is to predict this measurement outcome simultaneously as Bob and Charlie. Based on this, conjugate, conjugate encryption encodes the message using a one-time path followed by the conjugate encoding. And the conjugate coding provides unclonable security, which can be reduced to the security of this monogamy game. And it has been shown that uh, the value of this monogamy game is exactly 0.85 to the n. And this value was used as an upper bound on the secu unclonable security of conjugate encryption by the authors using a reduction in the following form. You prepare an EPR state and uh, apply the splitting map of Alice to the second uh, half and share it across Bob and Charlie. And this reduction works without any security loss due to the fact that the EPR pair is basis independent when the bases in question are 
Weissner basis. Therefore, the entanglement does not break, no matter what theta was chosen. We, we explored how to generalize this idea, and we examined for what basis this basis-independent EPR pair property still hold. And the answer to that is simple. Um, if we have a s collection of bases which, which are linear combinations of the computational basis with real coefficients, uh, then it turns out the property holds. And for any collection of bases like that, there is a monogamy game where instead of measuring on a random Weissner basis, the challenger will measure uh, on a random basi basis chosen from this collection. And this results in our construction, which mimics conjugate encryption, except for uh, a general collection of real orthogonal bases. And using the same technique as Broadbent and Lord, we're able to show that we can reduce the security to the monogamy game. Therefore, this gives us a potential venue to explore meaningful upper bounds for unclonable security. On the other hand, we can ask the question if there are lower bounds for the existing constructions, meaning explicit attacks. And turns out the answer is yes. Even though no cloning theorem rules out exact cloning, it turns out it's still possible to approximately clone structured quantum states. And any construction in our generalized conjugate encryption, um, provided that it encrypts the message bitwise, just like in the original conjugate encryption, it is susceptible to a universal cloning attack, which um, approximately clones every qubit of the ciphertext and has the adversaries uh, try to decrypt the message as if they had the original ciphertext. Analysis shows that conjugate encryption is not good enough to achieve optimal security in this sense. Um, and in general, our generalized conjugate encryption could only be useful for this purpose if the bases are sufficiently entangled. We're especially interested in optimal security of uh, unclonability because Broadbent and Lord also showed that it implies unclonable indistinguishability, which we use to construct copy protection. In the final portion of the talk, I will summarize our copy protection construction. Given an unclonable indistinguishable secure scheme, uh, we consider a specific class of point functions and the distribution over this class uh, depends also on a signature scheme. And the construction itself is very simple. To copy protect, we simply encrypt uh, the signature using the key which are parameters of the function. And we also give the verification key of the signature in the open. As previously mentioned, we can only guarantee computational correctness. However, computational correctness uh, has been used in a slightly different context uh, with classical VBB obfuscation. And it also captures the intuition that the client will not experience problems of incorrectness. It is also not that weak in the sense that it's stronger than a recently used notion called distribution correctness. However, one issue with this weaker notion of correctness is that unlike per input correctness, we cannot ensure re reusability of the program unless it, it's used honestly. It's important to note that 
due to the QRAM construction uh, before us, it, the search for unclonable indistinguishability needs to be in the plane model to be meaningful. And here are a couple of concurrent works which achieve similar results. Uh, we know that sort of encryption with certified deletion is a weaker primitive, uh, but the authors achieve classical deletion, uh, therefore having comparable results. To summarize, our contributions can be presented as private key and public key unclonable encryption, um, which satisfy semantic security. And we analyze the secure, unclonable security of conjugate encryption and, pro and provide a lower bound using a simple cloning attack. And in terms of upper bound, we don't have a concrete value yet. We open a new avenue uh, for using monogamy of entanglement to achieve that. And finally, we show that uh, the stronger primitive unclonable indistinguishability implies copy protection for point functions. And to build, build on this, um, the reusability uh, can be extended to the unclonability setting, especially in the private key setting. Uh, and of course, to make our uh, generalized construction meaningful, uh, we hope that monogamy games that are uh, better than the BB84 game will be discovered. And um, it, of course, the biggest open question is whether unclonable indistinguishability is feasible or not. And it turns out to be a particularly challenging problem. And uh, one could also try to improve the computational correctness uh, to statistical correctness. And that concludes my talk. Thank you for listening.